Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. In the late 1990s, the United States participated in peacekeeping operations in Kosovo. The following segment profiles one Kosovo veteran who went on to enter politics. War is murder. War is destruction. And God is not on one side or the other. God is for life. And so we must take the position that we will end war. Each year, thousands of young people join the army in hopes of doing good, only to discover the harsh realities of war and injustice coming from the top down. Six years after that, I find myself still waging war on terrorism in the name of freedom and democracy. But in America. This is the story of one of those thousands. As a child, like most Americans, sure, I grew up playing an uh, army. I grew up with uh, a sense of good and evil and I guess I wanted to be on the, the good side of things and I thought I could help serve good and people by uh, maybe pursuing a career in law enforcement. My freshman year of uh, university I decided that uh, I had enough of school and I wanted to go off and do other things. I came to that conclusion that well yes I really want to go back to school at this point um, and I would, I think, like a career in law enforcement. So I decided to enlist the United States Army in the Military Police Corps. It's to serve one's country in some capacity, whether it be in national defense or uh, elected office, that is a, it is a, a noble calling to, to serve the, the will of the people. I was assigned to the 101st Airborne Division, Fort Campbell, Kentucky where I, I was basically a cop on base. May of 2001, I was deployed to Kosovo, the former Republic of Yugoslavia. I was on patrol with about 245 rounds of ammunition strapped to my body, an M4 and a 9mm every single day, in full body armor. We were patrolling areas that were hostile. We were exposed to a country in chaos. a war-torn third world country. One of the things we had to do was go to the Serbian village on occasion and guard a school. And uh, nothing like the elementary school I went to. It was a one room, looked like a one room structure. Everyone there seemed, at least when I was there, from what I can remember, a bit malnourished, you could tell. There were kids though and I remember this kid, Milos, I sort of befriended. Very curious, very curious young lad. And uh, he was a good kid. And I remember uh, he brought his books to me, and I remember the books were missing pages and old and tattered. And that's, compared to what I experienced, uh, and that when I was that age in school we had very good books and it was a completely different, I couldn't imagine growing up in that situation, I guess. I felt that my presence there at the time, if I could uh, leave him with a positive memory, even though I was a soldier, uh, armed, an armed soldier, I hoped that I could at least leave a positive image and memory in his mind and that of his peers and that of his community. This just in, we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. They actually asked us, those of us who were battle-hardened in Kosovo, uh, they asked us if we wanted, they were taking volunteers to go in a back-to-back -back deployment to 
to Afghanistan. We knew it. Afghanistan. Everybody knew it. But that's where it was. That's where all the Al Qaeda camps were. I raised my hand. I said, I'll go. I'm not so sure. I'm, uh, I'm torn between the whole eye for an eye thing. I see how it create violence, uh, creates more violence, vengeance. I'm t still a bit honestly torn between it. But I think that we, d I believe that criminals need to be brought to justice. And I, a lot of people have died in this whole, since then. And we have to, we have, all of us walking around have to live with that. We have that on our, uh, that's our, our cross to bear. I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad I'm alive. I can tell you that. I know that some, some of my friends didn't make it home. And God rest their souls. Does it make you value life more? It does. It does. It makes you value life more. I've come to realize that we all have lived this life in this country and we have seen things, uh, issues, that we can address, that we can move on, that we have the, we have the insight to really address the issues. And, the best, one of the ways we can do that is by getting involved in the electoral process in this country. There it was. We did it. And we had made history. And the Veterans for Obama of Illinois, the Illinois Veterans for Obama, played a major role in it. The beauty of this moment in history is that we will also have a president who supports these demands. And now we finally have a, uh, a partner in the, in the White House. However, despite Obama's election, there is still much work that needs to be done. With only two weeks left of my contract, I was stop lost. And a year of active duty was added onto my contract. When I got a call from Dan asking me to purchase a flak jacket to replace the substandard one provided by the military, I was very afraid for him. While working at the infamous Abu Ghraib prison, I had the opportunity to speak with an Iraqi detainee. And after every statement, he would simply ask me as I listened, is this justice? I'm Andy Thayer, and you're watching Chicago Independent Television. Does Comcast hate God? Let's find out. Well, Comcast blocked internet traffic, which allowed internet users to upload and download online copies of the Bible. So yes. There you have it. Clear evidence that Comcast hates God. Help protect God. Visit these websites to learn more and get involved. Comcast, it's blocktastic.